And I'm curious if you have any ideas about is this by accident or we arrive at the conclusion from different directions? Yeah, actually, yeah, very good, very good uh, observation there. Uh, you know, I if this is really the way the universe work, it you know we should be able to find it in our you know in our ancient culture, in our modern culture, in our philosophy, in in the philosophies of our best thinkers around the world, and and that's what you're actually describing. Yeah, absolutely. I, this is why we're starting to find it in many, many different publications around the world, this concept of this infinite potential and so on. And what I've done basically is I've expressed that in a way that it's um, described mathematically and in the physics and the mechanics of it. Just like I said earlier, you know, like my, my equation shows that this that the vacuum seemed to entangle all protons, uh, meaning that all protons are connected through this structure of the vacuum, which makes it all one. And, and all of a sudden, the meaning of it's all one or we're all one makes, um, has a foundation in the physics and the mechanics of it, so that these concepts are, are philosophical concepts are all of a sudden given a physical meaning and how it's really happening. What is, you know, why are we all one? And, and why do we have infinite possibilities in each moment and so on? And, and that kind of completes the picture and, and as well opens up the field of uh, engineering and technology that uh, can align to these fundamental philosophical understanding and actually apply them because now we understand the mechanics of it. Okay, next up we go to Bellevue, Illinois, on the wild card line. Jim, good morning. Hey, uh, uh, good morning. Uh, I just have two questions. I have uh, the first question is, do you think that there is a possibility there is another form of gravity that is responsible for dark matter? And um, do you also think that it's possible there is a coact or subdimensional coact that is causing this um, possible equation. I'll take my answer off the air. Thank you. Those are really good, all these questions. I mean, they're like physicists all by themselves, aren't they? <laughs> yes, very good. You know, you can see that there's more and more really good thinkers out there. Um, uh, you know, I think that um, there's not, I don't think there's another form of gravity. I just think that we haven't completely understood gravity. Uh, and, and, you know, most physicists will admit to that. We don't quite know what gravity is. I mean, Einstein said it was the curvature of space-time, but that doesn't quite tell us everything. And, you know, I, the dark matter issue, uh, you know, as far as gravity goes, I think that when we start to understand, I, I'll, I'll make it really simple. When we start to understand that a galaxy is a function of the space, meaning imagine that the galaxy is actually a pattern in the space. Take all the stars out. The pattern would be there, and the black hole in the middle would be there, which I predicted from my theory there was going to be a black hole at the center of all galaxies long before they found it, uh, that, that there was. But imagine that this pattern is occurring, and it's just like in your tub when you pull the plug. You know, it makes that swirling pattern. Well, if, if you have a rubber ducky in your, in your tub, the rubber ducky would start swirling. Well, you know, when there's enough star, when there's enough dust, when there's enough uh, material around that pattern in the space, then all of a sudden the galaxy becomes apparent, you know, but that the pattern of the galaxy is actually in the space. When we start to understand that, um, that, you know, it's, it's the Coriolis effect of the structure of, the, of space and time that produces this effect. Uh, I, I, the dark matter issue disappears, and, and, and you know, the dark energy issue and so on. So uh, I think that's the answer there. Okay, next up we go to Los Angeles, California. Andrew, always a pleasure. Go ahead, Andrew. Yes, George, you're a great patriot, and we really appreciate you very much here. Um, the, the question is this. Uh, first of all, your guest 
uh, what he's saying uh, is brilliant, and what he's saying is resonating with me. And um, many years ago, real quickly, I, I spoke to Dr. J. Allen Hynek, and I asked him what the chances are of uh, there not being life on other planets. And his answer was quite simply impossible. Uh, my question to you, sir, is, in your opinion, uh, if we unlock the secrets of matter and the secrets of the universe and some, what some people call infinity, this infinite power in the universe, which man seems to want to um, unravel and maybe tap into, do you think that we will be able to handle the new world that is coming if we do, in fact, unlock those secrets, and how far off are we from unraveling those secrets? Also, what do you think of the crop circles? What, what are they trying, what's the origin and what are they trying to say? And thank you. Well, you know, those are good questions. Um, the, uh, I think that, um, you know, if we don't unravel these secrets, um, we're probably not going to make it. Um, you know, we we're reaching the um, capacity of our planet to sustain us. Uh, we're encountering many, many different issues, and our society is in deep need for a new, you know, way of doing things and, and an alignment with the forces of nature. Uh, will we be able to handle it? Well, you know, people say, well, you know, how – why don't you think that we could, we would destroy ourselves and so on? Well, you know, like people think of human beings as being fundamentally warlike and so on. I think that when you reach these levels, when you reach this level of technology and, and, uh, and understanding and you attach your society to the fundamental forces of nature, the first thing you, you realize when you write these equations, when you understand this, you know, philosophy, um, is that everything is connected and that you have an influence on the universe and so on. And, and that brings you to this infinite potential of energy and so on. Then many of the stressors that produces the wars and the dispute, uh, the dispute over land, the dispute over energy and all this, that goes away because all of a sudden you have, you know, almost infinite amount of energy. You, you probably can eventually produce gravitational drives and you can fly around at least the solar system. Um, you know, you have all sorts of goods out there. I mean, if you go to the asteroid belt, you know, there's all sorts of chunks of metal and all this, the size of continents and stuff. You know, I mean, there's like... All sorts of things you you can you know all sorts of space all sorts of of exploration that can be done all of a sudden these stressors that produces war are the the thought that there is limited amount of space and limited amount of goods and as soon as that opens up uh, the tendency to war most likely reduces very much uh, very much so so. I think that's one of the answers. How soon? I would say very soon. I would say right around the corner. Uh, I think we're very, very close. Uh, I think, you know, that our society as a whole is actually being prepared for this. I, I think that this amazing orchestration, this organization you were talking about, George, that nothing is occurring by chance, mm -hmm. but that there's an organizing agent that we're just at that crest when, you know, we are, we're asked to transform, to transform our ideas of competition to ideas of collaboration, to, uh, to realize that there's infinite amount of goods, that there is, you know, meaning that there's infinite potential and so on, and that, like, this, uh, this transformation is, is um, occurring and that the science that uh, is going to follow with this transformation is, uh, is arriving very, very quickly. Um, as far as crop circles go, 
um, you know, many, many crop circles are done by people. That doesn't necessarily make them invalid. I mean, people do get inspired, and, you know, what they may uh, draw in a field may have some actually, you know, fundamental universal significance, whether they know it or not. Um, how